Hi, Waypoint friends. This week we are looking at the book of Colossians for Read and Reflect, and we're in chapter 1. And the difference about Paul's letter to the Colossians than most of his letters is that he's writing to a group of people whom he did not know. This was a group of followers of Jesus, a church in the city of Colossae, who had first heard the gospel from Paul's assistant, Epaphras, one of the guys that traveled with Paul and from time to time would go out and start a new work in a new place. And Epaphras had come back and reported that things had gone well in Colossae and had told him about this group of Christians. So as Paul begins his letters uh, to them, he's uh, talking about his heart for them. And we pick up in chapter 1, beginning with uh, verse 9. We have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. Then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord, and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. All the while, you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. We also pray that you will be strengthened with all his glorious power so you will have all the endurance and patience you need. It's interesting because rather than kind of an ambiguous uh, way of praying, Paul says that he prays three things very specifically for the Colossians. First of all, he prays that they would be filled with a complete knowledge of God's will, that in every circumstance, the Holy Spirit would give them clear guidance as to what God would have them to do in any given set of circumstances. Second, he prays that they would be filled with spiritual wisdom and understanding, that they would understand whatever circumstances they found themselves, the spiritual elements of what was happening, that they would be able to recognize perhaps um, the influence of evil forces or recognize opportunities for spiritual conversations. And then third, he prays that they would be strengthened by God's power to have the endurance and the patience that they would need. Paul understood that because they were Gentiles uh, and that they would be following a new way of life, a new way of believing, a whole new worldview, that that was likely going to be difficult for them. And so he prayed very specifically that God would empower them to be able to endure with patience and grace when people around them misunderstood them, misrepresented them, and even openly opposed them. But it's interesting that these three things that Paul prays for the Colossians have results. Paul prays these three things so that they might live in ways that always honored and pleased God. Paul was actively praying for this group of people that he did not know that the way they lived would bring honor to God and would be pleasing in his sight. He also prayed that they would produce all kinds of fruit um, from their way that they lived. The New Testament talks about fruit uh, in three very distinct ways. First, there is fruit of character. In one of his other letters, Paul talks about the fruit of the Spirit, character traits such as love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, and so forth. Paul is praying that the Holy Spirit would work in this group of people that he did not know in ways that their lives would produce these kinds of qualities to the people around them and influence them for Jesus. The New Testament also talks about the fruit of good works, deeds of kindness, deeds of compassion that would communicate love in ways that the people around them in, in the city of Colossae had never experienced. And finally, the New Testament also talks about the fruit of more disciples. Paul had sent Epaphras to Colossae to raise up new disciples of Jesus who would be able to raise up more disciples of Jesus to raise up more disciples of Jesus. And so Paul, since he had heard about them, was praying for their influence with the people around them to be able to multiply themselves into others as new followers of Jesus. One of the great opportunities that all of us have to, as followers of Jesus is praying for each other. Um, and we can pray for things that need to be prayed for, 
good health, healing from disease or injury, provision for financial resources or other practical kinds of things. But we also have this amazing privilege and responsibility to be praying for the spiritual growth and development of one another. We all have a stake in building each other up and asking God for his spirit to be poured out on one another, that we would all grow more and more to be people who live the way that Jesus lived and to multiply ourselves into others. We even have the opportunity to pray for people that we don't really know, but we only know about. People whom we know are followers of Jesus, maybe close by us, but maybe all around the world. We can pray the same kinds of very specific things as Paul prayed for the Colossians. That's a real personal challenge for me and one that I'm going to be pursuing. Uh, as I think about this particular passage of Scripture. Hope this is encouraging and maybe challenging for you. Have a terrific week.